This is the story of Git, the most popular distributed version control system invented by Linus Torvalds and used by both individual developers and multi-billion dollar international giants like Google or Microsoft. If I had to describe what is Git using only a few words, I would say that it is a version control system that is a system that records changes to a file or a set of files over time and allows us to roll back to their specific version if we need to. Something like checkpoints or saves in computer games. Knowledge of Git nowadays is treated as fundamental for the developer and sometimes is not even mentioned among the skills required to fulfill a vacancy. GitHub, which we'll also talk about in this video, is not only a tool for individual and team development, but also a repository for a developer's portfolio, that is, a set of projects that can be demonstrated to the potential employer. So where did it all begin? A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, programmers sat in their caves dressed in furs and had to copy files to a separate directory to back up important development stages. Extra smart folks were even writing the time in the file name to maintain the chronology of changes. However, with the rise of the internet and the need to work with other people, centralized version control systems such as CVS, Subversion and Beforth entered the scene. They used a server that kept all versions of the files and several clients who were receiving files from this centralized repository, usually resembling a database. As you might guess, such a system had a very obvious drawback. If a server or a hard drive containing the database was gone to the land of the eternal hunt, it was taking the entire project with it. And this was a little bit painful experience. And when developers got tired of pulling their hairs out, there was a miracle. Distributed version control systems such as Git, Mercurial, Bazaar and Dux. Not only you could just download a snapshot of four files at a certain point in time, but also copy the entire repository. And even if one of the servers through which developers exchange data goes under, any client repository can be multiplied and the work will continue as if nothing had happened because each copy of the repository is a complete backup of data. Moreover, distributed version control systems allow you to interact with multiple remote repositories and development teams at the same time, which allows you to apply different approaches at the same time within the same project. For example, if you, my friend, is a web designer and you are working on your brilliant project in a team full of other wonderful developers, then the version control system is exactly what you will regret not using when something will go wrong. If you are wise enough and use it for your project, then you will experience true Jedi powers to control time, space and nerves. The system will allow you to revert all or only selected files to the state before someone thought that Comic Sans is a great font for the entire project. With the help of easy to remember commands, you can observe all changes that have ever occurred in the project, who made them, who gave permission to make them, and so on. And as a cherry on top, if someone managed to break the project or lose static files, good news, all this is fixable and reversible. But why exactly is Git still sitting on the Iron Throne right to this day, being the most popular version control system in the world? Back in 2005, after a series of bloody battles between the community of Linux kernel developers and a commercial company that developed a version control system called BitKeeper and made it proprietary, the fans of the open source, led by the King of Penguins, Linus Torvalds, created their own simple to use system with support for non-linear development and fully distributed of course it's funny but git has nothing to do with guitars who would have thought according to miriam webster in british slang git means a foolish or worthless person of course the official version is that git is an acronym that stands for global information tracker however there was an interview where Torvalds admitted that it is rather a so-called backronym, that is, something made up post factum. The main difference between Git and any other version control system is in its approach to working with the data. 
You see, most systems store information by and large in the form of a set of files and changes that have occurred in each file over a period of time. But Git's approach is more like treating it as a set of snapshots of a miniature file system. Every time a user commits any change, that is, saves the state of the project in Git, the system remembers the state of the files and stores a reference to that snapshot. And if the files were not changed, Git does not write them again, but only inserts a link to the previous version of the file which remained unchanged into this stream of data. Most of the operations in Git occur locally, and therefore you do not have to slow down waiting for a response from the server. You don't even need an internet connection unless you're working with an internet-based project or a remote repository. In other words, if you do your coding locally, you might need a Wi-Fi connection only when you need to push your work to GitHub, for example. In Git, a hash sum is calculated for everything before saving. If you're not sure what hash sum is, then in a few words, this is a long sequence of alphanumeric characters required for the unique identity of the file and its content. Therefore, Git references all objects in its database, not by name, but by the hash sum. This functionality is built into Git at a very basic level, and you will be seeing them all the time because Git uses hash sums everywhere and they play a significant role in Git philosophy. Almost all actions performed in Git only add new data to the database. It is very difficult to force the system to completely delete something without a trace or to do something that cannot be rolled back later. And with regular synchronization with a remote repository, losing your data becomes a non-trivial creative task. All this turns Git into a field of fearless experiments, because no matter what situation the user creates, in a predominant number of cases, it can be rolled back. Git has three main stages in which files may be modified, staged and committed. Modified means that changes were made to the file and it is no longer the same. However, from Git's point of view, nothing has happened to it. That is, it was neither indexed nor sent to the database. They just made changes and Git found out about them. Staged tells Git that the file is ready to be included in the next commit, something like a waiting room, where file anticipates that commit train. Commit is the actual submission to the database for safe storage. This brings us to three main areas of a Git project, Git directory, working tree and staging area. Git directory is where Git stores the metadata and the code base for the entire project. This is the most important part of Git and it is what gets copied when you are cloning a repository from another machine or a central repository, for example. Working tree is a single representation of a project. The files are unpacked from a compressed Git database where these files were stored and you get them straight to your hard drive. Staging area is a file that records information about what will be included in the next commit, kind of a collection of changes that will be recorded by the subsequent operation, commit. So what are the fundamental steps of Git working process? You make changes to files in your working tree, then you add your changes to this staging area, and when the commit happens, those changes are saved in your Git directory. If you want more details or have always wanted to study Git, then take a look at the links in the description under the video. Of course, such a wonderful tool as Git eventually inspired web services that would allow you to store your code online for both individual devs and huge teams. So in 2007, four chaps, Preston Werner, Chris Vanstrat, Scott Chazen and PJ Hyatt teamed up to create a GitHub and there is a suspicion that it was GitHub that helped make Git the mainstream tool. And since all four founders were Ruby developers, the rumor about a cool new tool spread throughout the Ruby community, and in particular after the Ruby on Rails framework itself moved to GitHub, the community has followed. GitHub is not the only service of this kind. There are, for example, GitLab and Bitbucket, 
but currently GitHub is the largest of them all. It stores the biggest number of repositories and it has an interesting story of relationships with Microsoft. Later, one of the co-founders of GitHub, Preston Werner, resigned due to accusations of bullying and something that was included in the report as inappropriate complaint procedures. But the story continues. And surprisingly, it involves the least likely candidate to support the open source products and Git in particular, at least as it used to be, Microsoft. Despite the fact that the company already had a product competing with Git, VCS TFVC, and Steve Palmer once called Linux a cancer, in the world of big money, there is no place for petty squabbles and personal opinions. Therefore, in 2012, Microsoft was gradually starting to flirt with the idea of taking over new territory and was starting to help quite significantly with the LibGit2 library, which includes tools for developers that significantly improved the lives of the latter. In 2013, Microsoft included Git in its Visual Studio, and since 2014, the new Microsoft executive decided to cancel the persecution of those who did not use the native Microsoft version control system at work, and in 2015, he hires one of the key Git contributors. Since 2017, almost all internal development at Microsoft has been done with Git. And what does GitHub have to do with it? June 2018, Microsoft buys GitHub for $7.5 billion, thus acquiring the largest code base on Earth. At first, many thought that Microsoft was behaving like a dad millionaire, in addition to the football uniform, buying his son a whole football team. But in the summer of 2021, everything became a little more obvious. On June 29th, 2021, GitHub Copilot was released, an artificial intelligence algorithm developed for GitHub by OpenAI in which Microsoft also has its interest. GitHub Copilot was intended, as the name implies, to be a copilot for a programmer, to help write code, point out obvious errors and other useful gimmicks. The official communique says that Copilot was trained on billions of lines from public GitHub repositories. However, how we would know if it was trained on just the public repositories is still a mystery at the moment. In any case, after such a statement, the percentage of folks leaving GitHub has increased. Anyway, I'm sure that this is not the last use of Git and GitHub by Microsoft, because the history of their relationships shows that Microsoft has far-reaching plans for them. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel. And also make sure you hit that notification bell. Of course, if you are into the quality stories behind business and tech. Thank you. Until next time. Cheerio.